I just want you to be conscious of what we're beginning to understand about the universe. This is the deepest image that was taken with our sharpest view, the Hubble Space Telescope. It's a remarkable image. It's also a little misleading because, as I said before, it only shows half of 1% of what's actually there. The other 99.5% of the universe is invisible. The bulk of the matter in the universe is something completely different. We don't know what it is, but we know enough about how it behaves that we can actually model it quite accurately. Our galaxy and the great galaxy in Andromeda are on a collision path. In about three billion years, they'll pass each other, and within five billion years or so, they will form an elliptical galaxy. Please welcome Dr. Joel Primer. Thanks, Deepak, and it's a great pleasure to be here. Uh, the next speaker is my wife and collaborator, Nancy Abrams, and it's a sort of a one-two punch that we've tried to uh, organize. So I'm going to talk about consciousness of the universe, and I just mean nothing very fancy by that. I just want you to be conscious of what we're beginning to understand about the universe. And then Nancy is going to talk about uh, what it all means. So, the main things I want to describe are uh, this scientific revolution that we're in the midst of in the study of the whole universe and what it's been telling us. Uh, it's a bit surprising. We used to think that the stars are basically the rest of the universe, the stars and the planets beyond the Earth. We now realize that all the stars and planets and gas and dust, everything we can see is about half of 1% of what's actually there. The universe is mostly made of two invisible, mysterious things called dark matter and dark energy. Galaxies are held together by and engulfed in enormous halos, we call them, of dark matter. And dark energy is causing the universe to expand faster and faster. The new cosmology allows us to understand how the universe evolved and to predict its future. And the surprising thing that we're learning is that we humans could be the source of intelligence in the entire future visible universe. I'll get to that part near the end. First of all, let me just sort of uh, give you a guide to how the universe is organized. So, of course, we live on the third of the rocky planets from the sun. It takes light eight minutes to get from the sun to the earth, 40 minutes to Jupiter, 80 minutes to Saturn, less than a day across the entire solar system. The solar system is located about halfway out from the center of our galaxy, about 25,000 light years from the center of the galaxy, which is 100,000 light years across. Now, every one of these dots in this lower picture is a big galaxy like the Milky Way. There's a few thousand of them in this local supercluster, our nearby part of the universe. We're going to take a trip starting here in our galaxy near the Earth and going across to the Virgo cluster. The point is going to be to understand how the galaxies are organized on the sort of intermediate large scale. We're going to start heading toward this familiar constellation. It's Orion, and there's the Milky Way next to it. The nearest 100,000 or so bright stars were carefully mapped by a satellite that produced its results back in 1997 called Hipparchus. We put all that data into the computer. The sword in the belt of Orion has this glowing gas cloud in it, the great nebula in Orion. A little past that is this dark cloud with the shape of a horse's head. As we pass the Horsehead Nebula, we're now 1,500 light years away. That means the light that you just saw, that was recorded by a big telescope on Earth, took 1,500 years to get here. Here's another one of these nebulae. It's a stellar nursery lit up by these bright stars that have recently formed in it. 
Here's yet another of these nebulae, just means a glowing gas cloud. But this one isn't a stellar birthplace, it's where a star died. We saw that on Earth about a thousand years ago. It's called the Crab Nebula. And if you look carefully, you can see the pulsar in the center, the neutron star that was the remnant of that supernova explosion. Explosions like this produce a huge amount of dust that block our view in the disk of the Milky Way. So let's rise up and out of the galaxy so we can get a view of the remarkable panorama of a great galaxy like ours. As the galaxy recedes into the distance with the large and small Magellanic clouds and other satellites, everything we see now is a galaxy. The other big galaxy in the local group is just coming into view, the great galaxy in Andromeda, and the smaller spiral, the Triangulum. As we go through this glowing gas cloud in Triangulum, we're now two million light years from Earth. Now, we're headed to the Virgo cluster, which is just coming into view. But we're taking a scenic route past some of the prettiest nearby galaxies. This is one of my favorites. It's called the Whirlpool. Notice that the galaxies form a big chain or filament. We're going to enter the filament over here, and then we're going to ride down it as we approach the Virgo cluster. Most of the galaxies we've seen so far have been spirals, big disks with a little bulge in the center. But as we approach the Virgo cluster, we're starting to see some big balls of stars, elliptical galaxies with no disk. This voyage ends at this gigantic elliptical galaxy, the biggest in the nearby universe. We call it Messier 87. It has a gigantic black hole in the center with a jet coming out of it. The black hole has a mass about six billion times the mass of our sun. Well, that was a short trip. The entire local supercluster is just a dot on the scale of this much larger scale image of the large scale structure of the universe. The Sloan Digital Sky Survey has now mapped over two million galaxies and it's a continuing project, and there are other big mapping projects that are being undertaken in the southern hemisphere, looking at a different part of the sky. Let's look at what the galaxies look like when you see them on the really large scale. We're doing, what we're doing now is backing rapidly away from the little part of the universe that we live in and showing you the galaxies that have actually been mapped in certain directions. There's a lot of galaxies that were mapped in this direction, and so they look like they're piling up. But what you can start to see is that there are walls of galaxies surrounding regions with very few galaxies. There's another wall and another cosmic void. These regions with very few galaxies are called cosmic voids. Now, we've only mapped these in certain directions. And it's hard to see what's going on until we rotate the image. Then you'll be able to see how we've got slices that have been mapped. They're like slices through a sponge with lots of big holes. As we back further away, we see the very bright quasars, which can be mapped out to great distances. And now we're seeing the heat radiation of the Big Bang. The colors represent slight differences in temperature of only a few millionths of a degree that have been studied by Satellites, most recently, the Wilkinson Microwave Anisotropy Probe, NASA's best satellite of this type, and there's a European satellite that's going to release its data soon called the Planck satellite. The map galaxies, the map quasars, the cosmic background radiation. And of course, we can only see this sort of an image of the entire sky from the outside with the help of these computer graphics. No real person could ever see this from the outside. <laughs>